This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. As I explained in an earlier message, the kingdom of heaven is within you. The same is true of hell. There is no place called hell. Like heaven, hell is a state of consciousness. Fortunately, heaven is your natural or true state of consciousness, while hell is what you experience when you're deeply identified with the ego in its most negative sense. It's good news that hell is not your natural state, although it is the state of consciousness most people live in to one degree or another. To the degree that they're identified with their egos, they're in hell. Why is that? Why is egoic consciousness so hellish? It's hellish because it is the opposite of the truth. In the egoic state of consciousness, you believe you are lacking and separate from all that is, and that simply is not the truth. Life is so kind that it makes believing a lie like this painful, while the truth is a place of peace and love. Duality, which is the experience in this world, is the experience of love on one end of the spectrum, which is heaven, and an absence of love on the other end of the spectrum, which is hell. The hellish end of the spectrum is a lack of truth and a lack of love, which is why it's hellish. The spectrum is a spectrum of love, from the fullness of love to ever-decreasing amounts of love. The point is there is no opposite to love. Love's opposite is an absence of love, which results in fear and suffering. People suffer because of a lack of connection to love, to one's source, and to the truth, caused by believing the lies promulgated by the false self through the voice in your head. That's good news, because the remedy is seeing the truth, that even though you may feel separate, you actually are not separate from all that is, and have never been, nor could you be. You belong to the source, just as fingers belong to the hand. You are love itself, masquerading as an individual, a separate self. There is no evil to overcome within yourself, only delusion, the delusion that you're separate. The belief that you are separate from God, that you are other than love, and the feeling of being separate causes people to do harmful and even evil things at times. But there is no one who is evil, since there is no one who is actually separate from love. Harmful acts are done out of fear, out of a desperation to survive and be on top at all costs. The truth is that everyone is made of the same stuff, love. When the delusion that you exist as anything but love is removed, you're free of suffering. Your divine self is unmasked, and it is loving, kind, and compassionate. Everyone, in essence, is loving, kind, and compassionate. But if you don't believe you are, and if you aren't in touch with the love at your core, you won't behave accordingly. You'll behave according to your fear, your sense of lack, and the other mistaken beliefs and feelings of the ego. Beliefs and feelings are this powerful. Mistaken beliefs and the feelings and actions that follow from them cause all of the suffering in the world. Unfortunately, beliefs are very difficult to change. The ego, which is behind the false self, does not change its beliefs easily. If beliefs were easily changed, the false self could not be maintained. The ego at its best is the sense of being a separate person. At its worst, the ego's sense of separation causes all manner of suffering to oneself and others. It hurts to be separate. It hurts to be cut off from love, from the truth, from God. And people who are hurting tend to hurt others. 
This sense of separation exists because in order for God to create and experience all that he, she wishes to create and experience, it was necessary to build into human beings the sense of being a separate individual. The ego was created for this purpose, and the ego serves creation well in this way. But when the ego was created, something else happened. It became divorced from love, and that allowed for the possibility of human beings to harm each other, fight, hate, and experience other negative emotions, such as jealousy, envy, resentment, and revenge. Not everyone has an ego that is lost to love to such a degree. Many have a very well-managed and contained ego. In other words, on the spectrum of love, they're somewhere in the middle or upper end. They have an ego, but their ego is tempered by love. Their ego identified at times, but not always. For the most part, they don't let the negative ego interfere with their relationships and with functioning positively. Although they feel like a separate individual, they still have access to the love at their core. However, for those who are intensely ego-involved, those on the other end of the spectrum, it's another story. They're out of touch with love. Like a badge of honor, they pride themselves in not caring about others, as if this is a mark of a strong and an independent person, not realizing that no man is an island and that true happiness and fulfillment can only come from love, not only loving others, but loving life and loving God. Those who are divorced from love, from the heart, hurt others, and are hurting deeply, although they may not show it or even realize it themselves. They were likely emotionally or physically abused or wounded in their early years, and as a result, closed themselves off from love. These are the ones causing the most harm in the world, and they are essentially living in hell. Hell is a place of not caring about others. When you don't care about others, you suffer, because it is your nature to love. To be true to yourself, your true nature, you must love. When you go against your true nature, it hurts, and that's the right experience, or how would you ever discover your divine nature? Hell is the state of consciousness that is obsessed with one's own self. The problem with this is that the self that is obsessed over is the false self, which by nature is never happy. Suffering is caused by being focused on what is not true, on a self that is false and on the lies that make up the false self. How can there be happiness or satisfaction in that? The false self is the imagined self that has programming that says, I'm not okay, you're not okay, life isn't okay. How can focusing on such a self make you anything but miserable? The false self creates unhappiness, and then it struggles and suffers over this state. But that's not all. The false self, which manifests as the voice in your head, is constructed of all sorts of misunderstandings and lies, such as the idea that you need something other than what you already have to be happy, when the truth is that it is your true nature to be happy. Loving makes you happy, and you are naturally loving, and loving doesn't require that you be or have anything. The voice in your head tells you that you don't have what you need to be okay and to be happy when you do. This creates feelings of fear, anger, worthlessness, competition, jealousy, dissatisfaction, sadness, and depression. And these feelings lead to poor choices and conflicts with others, and at its worst, criminal behavior in an attempt to get what you believe you must have to survive and be happy. 
The false self is an unhappy self, and an unhappy self is not loving to others, and those who are not loving to others are not likely to be loved. And so this is a vicious cycle in more than one sense of the word. A life lived as the false self, as the ego, without contact with your true nature or love, is hellish indeed. Fortunately, most people are not that out of touch with their true nature, with love. Most people understand the importance of love and believe in love. Thank goodness. But it's helpful for those of you who know love to realize that there are those who are so cut off from love that they don't know what love feels like, and so they don't believe it's real or meaningful, even though there is nothing more meaningful. This is why they harm others. To be cut off from what makes life meaningful and worthwhile, from the purpose of life, is empty and those in this situation seek to fill that emptiness with material things, pleasures, money, power, recognition, and so forth. But one can never get enough of those things because they don't truly satisfy. It is hell to hunger for more and more and never be satisfied. This is how many people do feel. Of course, all of you know what the remedy is. Because you are on the spiritual path, you have already discovered enough of the truth to no longer be fooled by such lies. Nevertheless, it bears repeating that love is the remedy. Love is what you're made of. Love is what is behind life. Love makes the world go around. Not romantic love, but this mysterious feeling inside your chest in the area of your heart, which you call love, but you can say little else about. My message to you today, as always, is to go toward love. Be love, express love, give love, and then you'll be happy. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being open to this message. I am with you always.